Hello and welcome to Remembrance Field for the first of 25 races in this year's TM Master Cup Series circuit, the Round of San Antonio. The NFL San Antonio Siege play here, and underneath the first row of grandstands is this half-mile oval. How they get the grandstands in and out of here is somewhat of a marvel of engineering that I can't quite explain. The team on the field regularly gets humiliated by the New England Patriots, just like everyone else in the world. However, time for something more exciting, the TM Master Cup Series season opener. And let's meet the starting grid. On the front row, least experienced front row in the history of the series, Marco Diaz, Castaneda, and Saul Fischel, both rookies. One start between them. Joe Olenek and Cameron Taylor head, head up row two, both former teammates. Row three, Scott Bates and three-time champion Adrian Devereaux. Row four, Arto Kekin and the reigning champion in car number one, Luciano Savarol in car five. Kurt Pliskin and Greg Woodard, teammates on row five. Davenport and Matthews are exceeding expectations in row six. Going back to row 7, Tom Moore, first of the Volpes, and David Krikorin in car 13. Kevin Dwyer in with the promoter's option, heads up row 8 along with Tony Durbin from Dallas on the outside. Excellent effort from Packer Carroll to qualify 17th along with Ian Cooper. Going back to row 10, Alessandro Rossini, the second Volpe, and Ingrid Hadeland. Yevgeny Kuznetsov and Craig Janssen, an amazing effort in row 11. Zelda Ashby and Hector Serrano, great, uh, got a big uh, applause and driver introductions, did Serrano. Going back to row 13, D'Souza, the second promoter's option, and Brandon LaRoe, the third Ortega car. Lecklider, and Webster is actually the third fastest rookie in the field. Excellent effort by Gareth Hunt and Mason Yokoyama is the first of the Independence Trophy cars. The Texan in front of home crowd here. Truman Ellison in row 16, along with another Independence Trophy car, Casey Lester. Chuck Johnson in car 32, and Ben Atkins in car 90 had a misfire in qualifying, but didn't go for another time. Clay Gibson and Tim Ruiz in row 18. Row 19, Liv Eklund had a spin in her first effort in qualifying, went back out, didn't do a whole lot better, and Lucas Grabert, the German. Team Timothy had, is in row 20, Ike Durbin and John Dilks, and at the back of the grid, Freya Mast and Nathan Ormond, both of whom had struggles all weekend, but improved a lot in their qualifying efforts. Now, the, the field comes to take the green flag. Marco Diaz Castaneda and Saul Fischel take the green, and what a start! What a start by Joe Olenek from row two! I don't think Fischl was ready for that, but Castaneda was. And going now to complete the first lap into three and four, Marco Castaneda, the young Mexican, leads the field into the first turn again to start the second lap. Olenek, who was the quickest car in all of practice. Kurt Pliskin in car 16 having a pretty good run here uh, so far, and I'm noticing already that everyone on the inside line is having a, is having a really, really easy time getting around here. Joe Olenek in car 23 was fastest in all of the practice sessions. I don't think uh, anyone is, good, is surprised by that to see how hot his Walter car jump out to this big of a lead. Early, we've seen Adrian Devereaux do that several times in the past when he was with that team. And Castaneda beginning to fall back just a little bit in the nine car. Doesn't look overly ruffled, uh, does Castaneda. He's giving everyone a lot of room. Fischl also hanging out of the outside back there in car number eight. And uh, looks like Castaneda is going to be able to get back to the bottom. And uh, here is his teammate, the reigning champion, Arto Kakinen, in car number one. I think a lot of us are eager to see how his title defense is going to go. And uh, he, while well, he's coming out swinging early, Kakinen in this uh, candy red Syra car looking to do well here. And here's Kevin Dwyer in car number 72. And he is only running a couple of races this season. And uh, he's making good on his uh, limited start so far. He's up to six. That's David Krikorian in the 13 behind him. Now, I, everyone that started on the inside line on the starting grid, you may have noticed, has already jumped up through the field because this is sort of a one-lane racetrack. But I do say sort of because that is not entirely true all the way around. Tony Durbin in this 12 car is having a pretty good start. He's running in the top 10. And... Uh, Tony Durbin got one of the loudest applauses during driver introductions. Uh, Tony Durbin, uh, Hector Serrano, and uh, of course uh, Castaneda. John Dilks in car 68. You may have seen him peel off into the pit lane while the rest of the field was coming to take the green. Team Timothy's had a lot of problems on and off throughout the course of the week. This is not a. Uh, this is not this year's Gessler. He's driving. He is driving last year's car, and uh, he's having some issues there. Freya Mast in car 898 is actually having a decent start. Now, that orange 95 car right behind her 
Both these two cars were well off the pace throughout practice, but they got their act together in, by the time final practice kicked around, and both uh, Ormond and uh, Mast, understaffed teams, but they're doing pretty well. So is Casey Lester's team. This zero car uh, is going to be able to run a home race for once. Alex Harrison Racing is based out of Los Angeles, in the, in the Los Angeles area. No sponsorship on the zero car, but that team has always been financed by the team owner, Alex Harrison. Now, Liv Eklund, in car number 11, has rocketed up to 20th, and she started way back in the field. This car sounds a little different going by, and I'm not quite sure why. Uh, Eklund in this 11 car, remember, she had, she didn't have many laps in this car preseason and none on an oval, and she crashed out of this race uh, in the TM Light Series last year on lap 9. So she's already gone further than she ever has in a race here. Uh, so Eklund now into the points. But remember, she did start on the inside line deep in the field. David Kerkorian in car number 13 is up to 8th, and that's Adrian Devereaux right behind him in that neon orange A-cap car. Dwyer on the outside is going backwards. Devereaux peeks his nose in on his old ride. DK giving a, giving Devereaux a, a hard time, but these are two guys that uh, have raced each other cleanly in the past. Kurt Pliskin in Power Stick Incorporated did not have a good year here last year. However, he is doing a pretty good job so far trying to hold off the Lennart factory driver, that of Saul Fischl in car number eight. Fischl is having an amazing debut so far in the series. He didn't run here last year because he was still 17 years old and couldn't run the TM Lights race here. Of course, he won the TM Lights championship last season. Castaneda running in 11th now. From the pole back to 11th. Doesn't look, he looks competitive out there, does Castaneda. And uh, he's uh, lo lost ground to a Rossini there, but he's still hanging on. We'll see how he's able to go across the whole season. It's going to be a little unusual to see uh, that number nine and not think Arto Kekkonen's in that car. Kekkonen, of course, in car number one. Castaneda in number nine. That is Kekkonen's number last year. I would imagine that if Kekkonen were to fail to win the championship again, he would return to using car number nine. Especially since uh, I don't think that was initially Castaneda's preferred number. Going back now here to Chris Davenport in car number 17. He has gone backwards along with Ryan Matthews, who he shared a row with on the grid, I'd like to point out. Uh, I don't know what's up with the Davenport car. Um, not, we don't have access to the radio communications from... Uh-oh, I saw something go up in the background. Oh, that's Eklund. That might explain why that car didn't sound good at the start of... Uh, when it came by us earlier in the day. And, uh, and that also might explain why she flew through the field as quickly as she did, because uh, sometimes engines tend to perform at their best right before they're about to blow. Mason Yokoyama in car number 76 is running in 27th place. That's a pretty good start from the Texan in front of home crowd. And there are some people who think he is actually an even money favorite to win the Independence Trophy. And uh, he's running the first four, uh, first four races of the season. Now those are his four Independence Trophy races. Ben Atkins in car number 90 is also having... Oh, no! Oh, no! That's another engine gone. Now, he was right behind Eklund's car when that when the, when the 11 car went. So we're not sure if something fell off Eklund's car and Atkins happened to run over it. We're not, we're not sure. Oh, he missed pit entry! Or that, no, that was pit exit. My mistake. Uh, this is the only oval where the pit lane is on the outside, and, uh, uh, that is actually somewhat of a concern for some people on the grid, uh, some people in the paddock today. Of course, we don't have many cameras in the pits as a result. Joe Olenek, as you can see right there, is kind of pulling away from the field a bit, and if I'm any, if I'm the rest of the field, I'm pretty concerned about that. Running order, you see on the left, Packer Carroll not having a good day, he's falling fall all the way back to 35th, right in front of this man. Zach Webster in car 87. Having a bit of a rough day is Webster. Uh, but these guys are going to have to start picking up the pace here because the leader is coming down on them pretty quickly. You can see Joe Lennick way in the background there. I mentioned Nathan Ormond a little while ago uh, as being a bit off the pace of practice, but um, it put, he's gotten his act together for the race. This team has made a lot of improvements over the weekend, and they should be applauded for that alone. And he is racing the 898 car for position here, but they're also trying to stay on the lead lap, which means they're not exactly entitled to let the leader go by. Uh, Ormond and Mast having a good battle among themselves and with Lucas Grabert there. And uh, those are the guys, and Ormond really has to uh, be racing uh, Mast a lot harder than anyone else because remember, independent trophy cars usually only worry about each other. Uh, anyways, 
Adrian Devereaux has gotten his way up to third. Where have we seen this before? Adrian Devereaux, actually, if he, if Adrian Devereaux is to win today, he'll actually set a record in the series for winning the season opener the most number of times. Weird stat, but uh, that used to be a mark held by Joseph Howard, who used to always come out of the gate swinging, and uh, would. Uh, Howard, of course, won the season opener six times in his career. Saul Fischel running in fourth is also trying to uh, equal history, rather, by uh, being the second driver to win on their debut in the modern era. The other, of course, being Ethan Everett, who is here today as part of the uh, ASCC. Uh, he's in the ASCC paddock, is Everett. Alessandro Rossini, the Italian, has moved his way up to sixth, and we've already had a car hit the pit lane. Another car hit the pit lane schedule. It's Craig Janser, and he's gotten himself into the wall again in the Scarabs car. Janser in that uh, sort of really dark purple and green car. Oh, and another car has come into the pits. Ryan Matthews. That's the Matthews Motorsports 06 car, and they were looking at... The team was looking at that car for a while. So I wonder if there actually is a genuine mechanical problem that both the Matthews cars have succumbed to a little bit because Matthews' stop was a lot longer than Janser's was. Anyways, Castaneda, car number nine, uh, trying to get around Robert, the German, trying to who's trying to hang on to that car because Lucas Grabert is uh, that's not a that team is not exactly having uh, that many uh, good things happen to them. They've lost the 34 team has lost two engines this weekend, and uh, things are apparently only getting worse. Not a lot of track time for them either, and this is a track that's historically been pretty bad for rookie drivers. Joe Olenek has continued to set sail. He is rattling off times that are nothing short of amazing. And this, of course, remember, Olenek doesn't have a win in the Master Cup Series uh, to his name yet. And uh, Saul Fischl here running in 30s. This is gotten by Yoki Yama in the 76 car. Fischl's having a good race so far in this car number eight. Uh, honestly, I'm a little surprised they've gone this far into the race without a yellow. Most of the paddock was expecting this race to be littered with cautions, and we're about 90 laps in and we don't have any. Here's Serrano in car number 20, the KLTV car trying to go around the outside of a couple of cars. That's Kuznets up on the bottom, but he's racing Ruiz in the uh, in that white and brown uh, uh, 33 car, and Kuznetsov, who's a bit was a ways ahead of him. Webster and uh, the 34 Grabber are also racing for position, so they're not exactly entitled to let these guys go. Oh, that's a mess, isn't it? Getting to notice a lot of tire fall off here as Elenik puts Cooper a lap down and is about to put Orman two laps down. A lot of tire fall off here, and that could be why Yonser pitted it when he did. Uh, and maybe trying to throw the dice, hope for a lucky caution and get himself uh, a lucky caution at the right time. On board with with Cooper on their car. Going right by the, uh, going by Ormond, who's uh, holding his line, giving him plenty of space. Woodard trying to stay in the lead lap by forcing Olenek to the outside. Greg Woodard in that 41 car, really struggling for grip out there in the Lycoya, but doing a great job so far because Olenek's, Olenek's pace is truly terrifying. But look at Cooper not giving Olenek a whole lot of love either. They're throwing it on the inside to try to get around the 23 and unlap themselves. Looking off the back now of Greg Woodard in car 41. There's Cooper back there, green car. Olenek up to the out is up to on the high side of Woodard, trying to put him a lap down. Oh, Cooper runs into Woodard a little bit. And that's not gonna help them out as they're falling back in that uh, two car. That's not nice. Uh, Nathan Ormond in car 95, we're watching, uh, watching him now. Hanging on to Freya Mass. This is actually one of the better battles on the track, believe it or not. And it's for 36th place between cars 898 and 95. Uh, it, this is track is real easy to see everything that's going on around here. But those are probably the two evenly matched cars out there. And they're doing a pretty good job. But look, at I don't think Orman should have defended it that hard, maybe. But Adrian, De Adrian Deborah shakes his fist at him. Oh, boy. Welcome to the Master Cup Series, Nathan. He's doing a great job so far, but uh, remember, we have to judge his. We have to judge the Independence Trophy cars slightly differently. Cars 19 and 20, Ingrid Hadland and, and Hector Serrano doing battle for positions 19 and 20. Uh, I like it when things line up like that. It's uh, 
satisfying, to say the least. Hadalan doing a pretty good job so far because they weren't sure exactly where Lynx was at given how rough their offseason was, of course. They lost Davina Henton to that uh, to an automobile accident and uh, Yulia Nasova to maternity leave. Nasova is here, uh, actually, uh, actually in the pit box for Hadalan. And now they're both about to go a lap down which means once Hadalan goes a lap down, Aletic has started to put laps on cars in the points. We're uh, just, we're about half distance here, and the pace that Joe Aletic has shown is well and truly extraordinary. Car, uh, Craig Yonser in car 81, that tire gamble that he, uh, that he made to pit early, I don't think that's really gonna work out so far, but we're not sure when everyone else is scheduled to pit. He's in 39th. Of course, there are two cars out of the race, uh, that being Eklund and Atkins. As uh, now watching Elena try to put... Oh! Oh, Elena is slowing! Oh, did he run it out of fuel, maybe? Oh, no! That's got to be a big mistake if he did that! They sh um, I would imagine they called him in earlier. Now on board with Cooper in uh, the Octane car. The stack of entering the pits. Now I think everyone's got the message... Wait, we need, to, in order to come in now, on, on board the other EFR car, Scott Bates. Oh, oh, that was in too hot. It, it coming into the pits too fast, he ran into Gaspar D'Souza. I don't think that'll be a penalty, but we're not sure. Alenic leaving the pits. Thankfully, the I, thankfully, I think uh, everyone else is trying to stay out and was, bank, was uh, basing their strategy around when he pitted. Adrian Devereaux now in the lead, and uh, I looks like he's Devereaux has saved fuel a little bit better than Elena had now Devereaux into the pits on lap 123. Kevin Dwyer is now being scored as the leader in car 72, but he's due to pit just, yep, here he comes. Dwyer now in. Fischl leaving the pits in car number eight. See where he comes out. There goes Elena. So we have a new car in second, and it's the rookie, Saul Fischl. Alenic leads in car number 23. Still setting a blistering pace and despite running out of, almost running out of fuel on track. And now he's chasing down Hector Serrano. Well, he barely lost any ground at all. What well, this effort by Joe Alenic and how does Walter racing is quite, is quite amazing to be honest, because um, I have the, uh, I can only, I really have kind of run out of words to say to, uh, to talk about how well Alenic's doing right now but he's uh, really taking over there quite well. Now here's another guy who's jumped up to the field. It's Timothy Ru Tim Ruiz, the former FARC driver, is uh, in the Hastert car, really beginning to challenge the car number nine with Hector Serrano at the wheel, and that's David Krikorian right behind him. Uh, don't normally uh, see the Hastert cars running this well. Uh, of course, so this is the car that Ingrid Hadeland won Rookie of the Year in last year, the, uh, that car number 33. Highest running independent trophy car right here, Mason Yokoyama in front of his home crowd. Then Casey Lester does two spots behind him in 25th. Of course, Yokoyama in 23rd. And uh, here is the uh, car number one, Arto Kakinen, who has taken over the second position, trying to run down Joe Olenek. Kakinen doing, uh, trying to repeat what he did last year, which is win here. Olenek, car 23, he's got a pretty big lead on Kakinen. It's a it might be a little bit difficult to tell the two uh, Richter cars apart, but um, if you see the blue car with the, the candy red car with the blue roof, that is Castaneda. And whereas Kekkonen's roof is black. And also the shade of blue on those cars is slightly different. Alessandro Rossini has fallen through the order. The uh, car number three was on pit, was uh, in the pits for a very long time. I don't quite know what happened, but they had uh, seemingly quite a few miscues with uh, involving the right side tires on that car, number three. Big disappointment for Rossini, but he's still in the he's still in the fight right now. Cameron Taylor from Ohio is up in fourth in the in the uh, Lenardo International car number seven, Schaefer Group entry. Taylor having a pretty good run so far. He's off to uh, about the start everyone was expecting him to have. A pretty, he's running really well, but he's being overshadowed by his teammate right now, Fischl in car number eight. Uh, if I'm a Cameron Taylor fan, I don't, wouldn't worry about it too much because uh, I think uh, Cameron Taylor's leadership qualities are why uh, both of them are running as well as they are. Because uh, Fischl is running Cameron Taylor's setup in that car. Uh, so I think that should be a credit to Taylor as well. 
Craig Yancer, we're looking at him because he's on an alternate strategy. He's in 26th. So maybe that tire gamble is going to work. But now everyone that everyone's on fresher tires, likely we're going to see this car fall backwards a little bit. And uh, you see the 30 car, the third Ortega car. Uh, they pulled the rear end off that car after Scott Bates hit him in pit entry. Uh, like I said, since that incident happened on the access road and not pit road itself, I don't think there will be a penalty. Now, Adrian Devereaux has a mark on the right side of that car. I don't know where that came from, but we're being told it was in contact with a lap car. Uh, that's not going to sit well with Adrian Devereaux, whose fondness for the back of the field is uh, legendary. Uh, anyways... Fischl is now running down, is run down Arto Kakinen and is doing battle with him for the second position. Now, normally you see rookies really struggle on um, old tires, and we have a yellow out. We're about to find out why. Packer Carroll, car 71. Oh, he got help. Oh, a little help from Brandon LaRoe on the 25. Oh, that could have been a big one. That could have been a big accident. A little surprised it wasn't. On board, Chris Davenport. Have a better look at it, though. I don't know if there's much to see. Yeah, it looks like Lerota's got right into Packer. Packer lost it. Davenport lucky he didn't get taken out in that mess. Chris Davenport, uh, pretty lucky there. And uh, as a uh, great man once said, I'd rather be lucky than good. Oh, Joe Oletic has passed. He's gone by the pace car. Uh, there's pit entry. Uh, are they going to call him into the pit? No. That's interesting. Everyone else lead lap is... Oh, wait a minute. Joe Lennick was waiting to, for the pace car to catch him. And I think he must have forgotten to pit. Because the pit lane was open. Oh, no. Everyone else on the lead lap is pitted except for him. That's a massive, massive blunder. That with just, that with under 70 laps to go, is going to put Olenek at the tail end of the lead lap, it looks like. And going to put Fischl in the lead of the race. Oh boy. That's a huge mistake from Joe Olenek at Hot Is Walter Racing. I wonder if they're not having radio problems over there on the 23 team. Anyways, Fischl taking the field to the restart and... That's a slow start. Looked like Fischl let off the gas right before they took the green, which that's a that's a stacked restart, which you're not allowed to do in the series. You must maintain a constant speed on the on a restart, otherwise it can be reviewed. Look how jammed up the rest of the field is back there. Having another look at it. Blue car in front. I heard some I heard him just flip the throttle a bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that looks questionable. I think people are going to be talking about that one for a while. Now you can see right there, Savarol in the red five car was what was the car that got caught out by that. Adrian Devereaux went and Cameron Taylor uh, ate him for sorry, and um, Adrian Devereaux went ate him for breakfast basically on the uh, on the restart. And Fischl pulling away from the field now in car number eight. And uh, this is sort of what we saw on the initial start. Whichever car got into the lead was going to be able to pull away. And uh, however, I think this time it's mostly because of lap traffic rather than anything else. Fischl trying to become the second driver in the modern era to win on debut. In, uh, the, but, he, but this is going to be under investigation. And if a penalty could be thrown at him post-race, I doubt it, but it's possible. Kekkonen running in second now in car number one. And how long though? Savaral is going to take second from Kekkonen. And now Adrian Dever on the inside as well. Kekkonen might want to get down there as quickly as he can. But Savaral refuses to go away in that five car. Look at him go by. And there is the 30 of Gaspar D'Souza. He's no factor whatsoever. Adrian Dever on the 74 running right behind him. Kekkonen is going to fall back behind Cameron Taylor in the seven car. Now the five of Savarol, of course Savarol won the inaugural race here. Kekkonen won last year. This is the third year the series has been here. Adrian Devereaux yet to win here. And Saul Fischl in car number eight is pulling away. And uh, that again, that restart still under investigation. Might, ha might happen post-race. 
if any penalty is to come out about that, and there's confirmation of that. And uh, now Salvarol lost, lost second to Adrian Devereaux. The 74 has gotten by the five, and here is Cameron Taylor now hounding Salvarol to get by him and uh, to try to take third. Cameron Taylor is having a really good race, and uh, Lenard International in general running really strongly here today. I don't think uh, I need to mention that. The Volpe cars have been a, have been a little bit uh, been a little bit off seemingly, but Volpe's never really come out of the gates as uh, fast as most of the other teams uh, that they normally race with. Uh, we're expecting the Volpe's to look a lot quicker when some of the road courses start coming along. That's where they seem to excel. Joe Lennox gotten his way back up to 12th, setting some of the fastest laps of the race, but he's stuck in traffic and I'm not quite sure He's going to be able to get to the front in time. He's just going to have to get as strong of a finish as he can. He's going to definitely get the lap leader bonus points, that's for sure. As uh, Luciano Salvarol now trying to hunt down his old teammate, Adrian Devereaux, in that 74 car. And uh, are they catching Fischl now? It looks like they are. Uh, Luciano Salvarol and Adrian Devereaux could be making this a race with Fischl if possible. But if they're going to do that, they, need it. they might not want to be racing each other quite this hard as that could really help Fischl uh, stretch the gap a bit. Devereaux letting Savarol go by, it looks like, or is Devereaux content to run the high side, perhaps? Looks like that might be the case. See, that 74 card is sitting on the top line. The Michelin Suns have not won the series opener uh, since Cyrus Laterza, believe it or not. That's a name for you that uh, I don't think many of you have heard in quite some time. And, of course, Black Diamond Racing never won the season opener before. And uh, uh, Savarol now trying to hold on. He's uh, moving up the racetrack a little bit. Now, if you're running, of course, towards the top line of the track, you're gonna, it's going to do your tires. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier on the tires. And uh, uh, Adrian Devereaux is definitely cognizant of that fact. Savarol is as well. Looking off the back of the eight car, back at, these, uh, back at those two. Uh, now, uh, Devereaux on the inside of Savarol. Devereaux goes by. Uh, that was a lot easier than I think than uh, we were expecting, but they're looking a little bigger. And yes, they are faster. Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol were both a tenth faster than Fischl that lap. We, this could be a race on our hands with 20 laps to go. Fischl is running the lap traffic now. That's Ryan Matthews. Of course, that car has had some mechanical difficulties early in the race. The uh, car number 06. Official uh, sticking it on the inside. And uh, Matthews gives him plenty of room. He's well out of it. No, no uh, reason to fight that at all. Uh, would be, uh, wouldn't exactly be courteous of him to fight that. But uh, Devereaux gets by him without a problem. Savarol's taking a while to get by the 06 car. Uh, and of course, when the lap car gives you room to go by, Luciano, you actually have to pass him. Uh, as, you, as you can see here, officials uh, might run into more lap traffic before this is over. Car he'd run into is the, uh, that Lu that's Lucas Grabert. And Adrian Devereaux now is really caught up to the back of the eight car. Fischl seems like he's stalled out a little bit behind Grabert. Devereaux making a move. Is he gonna, no, not close enough. Not close enough, that looks like that got Fischl's attention. Saul Fischl, the, the, rookie from, uh, the rookie from Deerfield, Illinois, he's throwing a block on Devereaux. Grabert is no factor. He's moving up out of the way, giving them plenty of room. Fischl really defending that as hard as he possibly can. Uh, well, of course, uh, as, hard as, he, as hard as he dares, Devereaux really throwing the A-cab car on the inside. And it's not going to do him a whole lot of good. Now that's the second Lawrence Gravity car that Fischl has to get by. That's Packer Carroll. Carroll's giving him a lot of room. And uh, Fischl goes by. Devereaux's now there again. Just a couple laps to go. Devereaux's going to have to make this one quick. Going into turn one with just a... And uh, more lap traffic ahead. Devereaux not able to make it stick. And Fischl hanging on. He's just got a couple more laps to hang on. Oh, he slips in three and four. Big slide from Fischl. Devereaux's got a run on him going into turn one. Skates up the track. And Devereaux's going to have a run down the back straightaway. Is he going to be able to complete the pass this time? And it looks like he is. Fischl really is having a problem in the middle of three and four. Adrian Devereaux takes the lead with just two laps to go now. 
That was across the line. Devereaux held the lead. Fischl's got a run coming off turn two. Is it going to be enough? Devereaux squeezing him up the track. He's got Clay Gibson to use as a pick in that orange 79. Clay Gibson's not been much of a factor. White flag for Devereaux. Down the back straightaway for one last time. Fischl's got one last try. Not does look like it's going to be enough. And Adrian Devereaux off the final corner takes the win for the Michelin Suns here at San Antonio. Taking the win over Saul Fischl in a close finish. Luciano Salvaral completed the podium in third. Cameron Taylor, Tom Moore, Zelda Ashby had a quiet run up to sixth place. I don't think we saw that 55 car at all today. Joe Olenek, despite leading 153 of the 225 laps, is only able to get seventh. Arto Kakin in eighth. Kevin Dwyer ninth, but Dwyer's only running a partial schedule. David Krikorian rounding out the top ten. Castaneda went from the pole down to 11th. Chris Davenport, Tony Durbin, Scott Bates, Kurt Pliskin is the last car in the lead lap in 15th place. Greg Woodard was the first car off the lead lap. Timothy Ruiz and Ian Cooper. Those That was an interesting battle towards the end of the race was Ruiz versus Cooper. Of course, that being won by Ruiz. Chuck Johnson in the second Hassard car and Yevgeny Kuznetsov round out the points finishers. One look at the Drivers' Championship looks almost identical to the race results, except you can really see the effective bonus points here. Remember that Adrian Devereaux won a championship because of getting the lap leader bonus. So that could have a really big effect down the line as well. Of course, Joe Olenek got the five bonus points for leading the most laps, and Marco Diaz Castaneda got the bonus points for leading the pole. That was also five bonus points. One look at the Independence Trophy really shows the order in which the Independence Trophy cars came across the finish line. Mason Yokoyama in car 76 won that battle over Casey Lester. Nathan Ormond and Freya Mass brought up the rear, but both were a lot closer than were expected of them early in the weekend. The next time the series will be in action will be at another high bank short track, the Maxwell Center in Los Angeles, California. The round of San Antonio was part of a long weekend of motorsport, which also featured the Farklow Dollar Series. You can check how that race went over here, or check out this video from a friend of the show.